on a consistent basis. So just for everything, you know, it, it helps the whole team because now you can get the twos, the threes, and even sometimes the fours in there. It helps our drill work where we can really work and I'm not worried about saving them just to get to a team period. And, and above all else, competition, right? That's, that's huge in all of this. So night and day, love it, it's been, it's been great. How does it help the D line up too? Uh, oh, it, yeah, because you know, last year you gotta imagine, you know, when you got two guys in there that are D line and playing old line and you got a young kid in there and the competition is not great, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like if he wins, it's like he didn't accomplish anything, you know, and there's, there's no, you know, like you the old sayings, right, iron sharpens iron. So it's great because the more we have, the more we're coming after them and the more they bring. And so both of us make each other better. So like I said, it affects the whole team. It really does. Chris, uh, J Nick and JD, both when they came in here the last couple weeks mentioned, you know, when their decision to come back, talking about seeing more for themselves and you being a part of that, you seeing more for them. Just what does it mean to get them back and what do you see as, as another, you know, as their possibility for another year? Well, there's nothing like experience up front, you know, so it's huge getting them back. And, you know, they've been solid, good players for us. So we had, we had good conversations and, you know, we researched every avenue and I supported them in it. And it was their decision. And, you know, when they both made the decision to come back, obviously that was huge for us and our team. And, you know, they're continuing to grow. They understand, you know, some guys, fifth year seniors, they kind of get out there just want to survive spring, but that's not their mindset. And, you know, rotating them in some different positions and help them get experience there. And, and, and they really worked hard to just get better. They understand what they got to do to help us win a championship and get where they want to go. Did see JD at center today. Is mm -hmm. it just a spring experiment thing or is it something you could see going forward? I mean, it, a little bit of both, right? Like today was his first day there at center, but it's something we had talked about before. And, you know, the next, where we have five practices left, I'll, I'm going to move some other guys around. We were pretty stable the first six, seven, eight practices, just make sure everybody understood the install, knew what they're doing. Now I'm moving some guys around just to build depth. And, you know, for a guy like JD, if we get in a situation where, where we need somebody, he's ready to go. Plus, for his future, I think it's a huge plus. Coach, when you, uh, you know, during the 11 and 2 season, one of the Right, that was that that was a special deal. Like I said, even then in my career, I've never been in a situation where I could play nine guys and not even worry about putting them in. In fact, sometimes you put in the the second group and they did better than the first group. And we're not there yet, but we're we're close. Like I, I'm starting to feel like we're we're got eight guys that I feel like we can play with, and I'm hoping we can get to that nine or ten and and have an opportunity to do some of that because. You know, nobody wants to leave the field, but at the end of the day, competition makes them better, right? And if you can keep those guys fresh for four quarters, that's also a huge plus for us. There's no question about that. So it's something I would love to be able to rotate some guys in. And we're not quite there yet, but we're, we're making progress. With Nick at uh, left guard today? Yes. That, that's part of what you said. You like, okay. Is that yep. the same kind of deal, just first day and just giving it a shot? Yeah, you know, we just wanted to, you know, get Nick some reps there. Again, you know, that helps him, you know, marketability for him in the, in the future. Plus also, you know, it's still about getting your five best guys out there, you know, and and who knows if that backup center becomes one of the top five guys, you might be able to move him in and then you can move a Nick to guard. So it, it, it's creating competition, it's creating experience at different positions, and it just helps the overall depth. How was that Black Stock doing to come up this level in his first couple weeks here? Yeah, he's doing a good job. It's like anything else. It was a transition. Um, he's done a nice job with it. You know, when we got him, there was there was some. He had a few nagging injuries from from JUCO that we've been rehabbing and taking care of, and now he's really starting to progress. and And you can see his athleticism out there. He's starting to comprehend the offense a little bit. So I expect him to take off here in his last couple of weeks and just really, he'll make huge strides over the summer just with our strength staff and just understanding what we're doing and getting to fall camp. And so uh, with him and Ramil and Dellinger, I, I'm, I was thinking back, I don't know if I've had three kids come in at mid-year and be as good as those three have been as far as just understanding what to do. Like those two freshmen, it's pretty impressive. We put them in, 
we don't miss a beat. They understand everything. They understand the scheme, the techniques we're doing, and, and they're they're effective in there. So that's been a, a I don't know if I want to say a surprise, but but it it is you know to see those kids get in there and do what they're doing. So been pleased with that. When you see them, and you see the twenty two kids, you know, starting to spring up and everything, even the Ethan Boyd and such. Can you sort of see the future finally coming together from where you started to where you hope to be? I guess. Hundred percent. You know that that's really where I want to be. You know, I want to be where we're bringing the high school kids and develop them and get in depth. And, and then, you know, when one moves on, the next one can come in, he's ready to go. You know, and, and if I got to get a, a, a transfer to fill a hole, I'll do that. But I want to build the majority of my guys with high school kids and developing them. And we're finally getting to that where you're seeing improvement from several kids. And that's what you wanted, you know. So that's uh, that's been a big part of this spring, just seeing those young guys start to progress. Do you know, in, uh, what, two starts last year? I think it definitely benefited him. I think it gave him a little confidence because he played fairly well and, and uh, you know, so uh, experience, a little leadership. You know, there's some things he has to work on in his game and, and he's continuing to do that. But, and I said it earlier, nothing beats experience, you know, for to be out there in the fire and stuff and be on the road playing in the Big Ten and then have that under your belt. You know, no moment will be too big for him now going forward. He, he's made good, good progress. We thought last year, you know, it, it was a little bit up and down, and kind of the middle of the season, he started really playing consistently and really did not play well the last game of the year, and uh, he had a chip on his shoulder about that, which I, which, which he should, and that was good. And, and I see him making strides, you know. So he definitely understands what we're doing, and he's starting to increase his football IQ, which is important. And and you know, we got some competition too. So that's also a plus. We haven't had a lot of competition at tackle since I've been here. You know, that the year that we talked about, there was a little bit, but having having the possibility of four or five guys that can play tackle will be big for us. Size and length of those guys is too, I would imagine. That, that was an issue early when I right. got here. I mean, how much does, not just him, but the other guys, their length, are you seeing that, that size factor showing up? 100%, you know, you, you I mean, you can't, you can't coach right size and length. And, you know, when, when you've got big, long guys, even you see some big, long guys out there that are a little stiff and they're able to sur play and survive because they're so big, but none of these guys are in that boat and they do have some athleticism. So we that, that was one of our focuses in, in this whole process is we needed to get bigger and longer on the edges for sure. Really wanted to get bigger everywhere. How, how would you uh, rate the running game last year? And, uh, what, what, would you, what do you attribute the drop off, I guess, from 2021? Well, you know, the obvious answer is, is you didn't have a guy like Kenneth Walker in the back. It's, it's an easy answer, but that, there's more to it than that. You know, what's funny is statistically, last year we had, we gave up less tackles for loss and less sacks. There's, I didn't believe it when I saw it because you wouldn't have felt that way from what you saw. But, you know, you also didn't have those explosives that you could have. And, you know, and I've said this before, you know, if the run game is not good, the old line's always going to take the hit. And I get that, and that's, you know, it, it is what it is. But there's so much that goes into what we're doing from, you know, the quarterback getting us in the right play to the backs actually hitting the right hole to the old line getting on blocks and finishing. So, you know, I attribute it to we threw the ball more than we ever needed to as well. You know, we were down in a lot of games. I think, and you might be able to correct me, we may have had the least amount of rushes in the Big Ten this past year. We're close to there. So some of that is we got down in games and we couldn't run it. You know, we finally, I felt we, we started getting a rhythm in the middle of the season. We started running the ball with a little success, you know, and, and we're doing some positive things. But it was a combination of things. We all got to take blame for it. You know, I feel like we're, we're going to be in a much better position this year than we were last year. One of the other weird stats, too, is that the Cal broke it down. Like, the three top running backs averaged 4.6 a carry, and that's pretty good. Yeah. Like, and how much, I guess, over the course of the end of the year, because that's when you guys started you know, I, I just think we, we were getting a little bit, we were getting more consistent in, in the run game. And that came with, you know, what we were doing. You know, you had two new backs kind of getting, understand the scheme a little bit better, you know, and it all ties together, right? 
you know, you look at that four game losing streak and we were down, you know, it's hard to establish a run game when you're down. Then all of a sudden the defense starts playing a lot better. Now that gives us a chance to run the ball more and it all ties in hand in hand. It's the same thing on the flip side. We're going three and out every time we're putting them in the bind. So I really just felt like it was a team thing. Defense started playing a little better. We were in games, we had some leads, we were able to run the ball and it all tied up. Yeah, I know that's, that's a crazy stat too with those starting running backs averaging almost five yards a carry. You know, the biggest thing, we just didn't have the explosives that we could have had, you know. It's crazy, you know, a six yard run that turns into a 50 yard run, all of a sudden, you know, oh, instead of rush for 150, you rush for 200, right? There's so much that goes into analyzing a run game. But I think all that ties together. Well, we, we had a pretty good idea as far as our install. And then once we got our main install in, then we wanted to have a focus of what we wanted to really work on each day. I thought the scrimmage was, was a solid scrimmage for us. Um, we did well in some key areas. Our red zone was really effective. Our two minute was really effective. You know, so you saw some positive things there. You saw some positives in the run game. Not consistent enough, but you did see that. And again, seeing those young guys go out there and play at a good level. I'm not gonna say a high level, but a good level, that was a huge plus for us. So it was it gave us a chance to keep building instead of saying we gotta go back to the drawing board, if that makes sense. What's your uh, evaluation of the two new transfer running backs that you have working with uh, this You know, I've been really happy with them. Uh, you know, card number five, he's shown some some ability, you know, to hit the home run. And, you know, he's, he's explosive. You know, he's a, I mean, you see this guy in the weight room, you know, I mean, he's, he's put together now. And, and he's, he's serious about, you know, football and his life. I mean, he, he, he talked to the team earlier in the year and it, it was just really impressive. You know, he's an impressive guy. And, and Mangum, you know, it, me and him were joking, you know, we were in Colorado when he was a freshman and he had a really big spring game. He kind of jumped in the scene as a true freshman. Seems like, you know, 25 years ago now. And, but, you know, he, he's, he's gonna, we haven't had that big back, you know, like that, that I can really think of, other than, you know, when Hayward's back at one point. So I think the physicality of him, and he's kind of, he's deceiving for as big as he is. He, he understands the run game and can make a good cut and stuff. So I like the fact of having a big guy back there that can, can wear some people down as well. So I've been happy with them. All right. Appreciate it, guys. Appreciate it.